Welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel, where I tell you all about the things I've learned over the years, turning my backyard into a food forest. I hope you will subscribe, clicking the subscribe button, and also hit the thumbs up. So here we are, getting ready to delve deeply into my backyard food forest and check out some of the key elements which you can learn all about on the channel, but let's see what's blooming in June. Let's see what's happening in the scorching heat of summer as we probe deeper into the lush green canopy of my small backyard. But in this video, we'll also take a look at my front yard because it also serves a role in my overall permaculture food system. So buckle in and get ready to step through all 12 of the permaculture principles and talk about exactly how they relate to what I've done in my backyard so that you can also implement these same principles. Okay, let's get right into it. The first principle of permaculture is perhaps the most important, observe and interact. And that means become aware of the natural cycles and energies at play in your space, whether it's wind, water, salt, in the case of my yard. Go ahead and observe that mango tree. See the big hole in the middle? Well, that's from all the salt spray that pummels it. But I've built that into the system. I actually have a wall that prevents the spray from coming in too much to end up killing it, but if you interact with your environment in a way that you are working with it instead of against it, that's really living up to the first principle of permaculture. The second principle of permaculture is to catch and store energy. And this is easier than you think. I do this in a few ways in my yard. I catch and store the bunny manure. I catch and store the chicken manure. I catch and store the worm castings in the worm tea. So many ways I am going about capturing the output of my yard and turning it into nutrients. And that's the general idea. And now on to the third principle of permaculture, which is to obtain a yield. This is critically important. And as you can see from this mango tree, I'm obtaining a yield, but there's a mango tree just to the left of it that has not yielded anything. So I continue to try to get the yield because that's the point. I mean, I try new systems, new fertilizers, new approaches, and I'm getting there. The other thing is, are you obtaining a yield of nutrients and resources into your yard? Things like, well, you could have chips delivered, like I've imported wood chips into my yard for nutrients. That's one way to obtain a yield cardboard from your orders off the internet brown cardboard that's a yield you can feed that to the worms that's very good in the backyard so that's the third principle of permaculture now the fourth principle of permaculture is where we really start to show the sophistication of this framework and how cool it is and that is to apply self-regulation and accept feedback i practice this deeply in my yard i am forced to and that means watch how your systems interact and if they are consistently failing, change your system. So, certain types of citrus trees I've tried and tried, everything I try they don't grow, so I moved on to different types of citrus trees. I finally found types that grew and I'm getting yield, so I keep those. Examples of plants which grow in my loose sandy dry soil are things like pigeon peas, papaya, banana, so those are the kinds of things you're gonna see growing here. So accept that feedback and adapt to the continuous nature of your environment. And the fifth permaculture principle is to use and value renewable resources and services. I've done a lot of this in the last year specifically, and I mentioned a few of these already, but in addition to the cardboard and the composting, I also harvest plants and feed those back into the animals, which then feed that back into the manure, which then goes back onto the plants, which produces the fruit that go in the compost bin. So these, these 
natural renewable resources can start to create a momentum loop where you slowly close the loop to have all your inputs contained to the maximum extent possible. So I just want to take a moment to say thank you for watching the video this far and if you like this video find it useful or valuable please subscribe and hit the like button now that helps me in the YouTube algorithms. Now let's get on to the sixth principle of permaculture which is to produce no waste. And I see that as a principle and also a goal, very difficult to achieve. But again, closing the loop as much as possible. And you even look at this through the eyes of recycling, so the reuse of materials within your yard, so you don't really throw away something that you could reuse as a building material, let's say. That's a really good way to practice this particular principle of permaculture. Okay, and Principle number seven, lucky seven, and I have to be honest, this is my favorite principle, and that is to design from patterns to details. And here's what I mean by that. Let's say your family prefers certain things, like mine like fuzzy bunnies and the chickens and carrots, so I put those things closer to the house where they can enjoy them. Things which are less used, like banana groves, etc., where it's kind of the lair of the creepy spider and slithery snake, literally. Well, I put that more towards the back of the yard, but the chickens love to go there, as long as the snakes aren't too big. <laughs> so that's a great principle to put into practice in your yard, in your life. It really speaks to the wellness component of gardening, which is how do you make your yard into an interesting, adventurous, cool place that your family wants to interact with, right? Because that's a big part of this. You're creating a nurturing environment, not just in food, in my humble opinion. Okay, now number eight, the eighth principle of permaculture. It's a good one. Integrate rather than segregate. And what do I mean by that? Well, think of yourself as a node in a multi-dimensional web of other nodes, a network. And each node providing a more specialized service and value to the other node. That's how you could think of yourself and your neighbors in one way of looking at it that you may produce eggs and then they may produce the yard waste and food scraps that your chickens eat to make those eggs as an example. You may produce, well I'll give you an example, mangoes. Yesterday I drove a five gallon bucket of mangoes over to a local farm and was handed a rather large jar of the highest grade citrus honey I've ever seen and two bottles of cherry mead, homemade mead. That's what I'm talking about. Make connections with your neighbors, make connections with small farms, establish the value transfer between nodes. I am beginning to do that more and more and that's why this is one of the most incredible principles of permaculture and I very much encourage you to do this. Another way that I practiced this was when I integrated animals into my backyard, which was a major, major improvement. If you look into the research and, and work of many great people involved in permaculture, they will consistently say there is a need to integrate the animal component. And when you do that, uh, you get to meet all kinds of animal people, breeders of chickens, breeders of bunnies, in my case, both of those. So look for those interaction opportunities as you move out into the permaculture application world. As you look down over the backyard here, you can see these principles applied literally everywhere. And it's at this point that I will say to my subscribers and to the larger Eat Your Backyard community, if you're new, welcome aboard. If you are interested in having me show your backyard food forest. That's something I'm very interested in. Uh, you can send me a video and I will highlight it on the channel. I love to do that, get the word out, show your enthusiasm. So I'd encourage you to send me to my email address in the about tab of Eat Your Backyard channel on YouTube. Send me a video walking me through your backyard and I will share it with the community. That's an exciting new way that I'd like to live out the principle that I just described and that is to interconnect between nodes, grow value, have systems feed other systems in a way that creates larger and larger feedback loops of really abundance 
that's really the key word here is the perpetual motion which generates abundance I can say that the abundance goes far outside of calories or vitamins although those are of course very important they also go to the joy you feel as you ascend this longan fruit tree which is a type of lychee fruit tree and imagine the flavor of all those delicious lychees that are going to be realized one after another and that's all a result of simply tending a system. And now this system, the Longan system of delicious dragon's eye fruit, is being turbocharged by several other recent additions to my permaculture setup. Things like the bunny manure, of course, but also the worm tea. These components have made everything in my yard go off. I'd say the one other thing you may want to consider is to have a granular fertilizer that adds in some amount of micronutrients, a long sustaining type of granular micronutrients fertilizer and okay let's get on to the next principle of permaculture and of course as we get into the ninth principle of permaculture we reach a very sophisticated level of consideration and that is use small and slow solutions number nine use small and slow always think small and slow I could give you a hundred examples of where I didn't do this and wished I had I call this the don't bite off more than you can chew principle. Also complexity is the enemy of done and if you're like me you tend to build in useless complexity into systems. So really consider the utility of each element of complexity you add into your yard. It can be kind of simple. You may have to reshift around some of your beliefs about what something needs to look like or whatever, but you have to try to look at it from the correct perspective so that you make sure what you're adding is going to actually give you benefit. And as you make slow incremental changes, that also allows you to be able to adjust your course and change. Of course, when you make large changes, that can also cost a lot of money, and especially as we see lumber prices skyrocket, we need to be careful how much we start to build. It really emphasizes that point that the reusability and the resources are valuable. They're certainly valuable once they start to cost more money, but they were valuable before that. You see, if you're in a permaculture mind frame, you see the value in all of these things. You start to see quite literally things which you used to view as trash as treasure. And that sounds like a cliche or some tired trope, but it couldn't be more true. Sometimes the simplest things are the hardest to understand. And it is at this point I would remind all my viewers that my friends, the gates of hell are locked from the inside. Swing them open and get some sweet bunnies in your life. And this little guy is named Thumper. You see he's naturally spring-loaded and also the Brad Pitt of all rabbits. One of the most famous rabbits on the internet. You can also come see our sweet little chicky doos on each backyard. So I hope you will come on over, subscribe, and join our permaculture journey. Okay, now back to the next principle of permaculture. And the tenth principle of permaculture is use and value diversity. Now there's a few ways to look at this. One is we are omnivores and we are made to have diverse and changing diets. So you want a range of foods, not just mangoes, let's say. The other thing is that you want to have a diversity of crops and elements so that you don't just depend on one thing, one type of food to make it, let's say, when you may have an insect infestation on that and it would wipe it out. So I would call this the don't put all your eggs in one basket principle of permaculture. And it's paid off for me. And I would even say diversity in location in your yard. Some insects like aphids and some other more localized types of pests will localize in a part of your yard. And if you have, say, vegetables in one corner, they may not make it to the vegetables on the other corner of your yard. That's very good for the vegetables that were on the other corner of your yard. And I've seen this happen 
all the time. The other thing is not to just stack up types of plants right next to each other, spread them out so a type of insect or disease doesn't jump easily from plant to plant. There are little concepts like this that live up to permaculture principle number 10 that really help you. They're practical and it's almost a way to think of it as insurance for your output of the garden. And now let's move on to another really great principle of permaculture, number 11. And number 11 is another very sophisticated principle of permaculture and that is to use edges and value the marginal. This is almost where permaculture starts to sound like some slogan of a superhero or something. It's, uh, but it's just how nature works, really, which is the profound philosophical connection I feel with this way of growing things. And that is that space has value. In other words, the marginal or corner edge areas of your property have value and the capacity to produce value if utilized. I recently applied this to a part of my yard which has laid essentially dormant for 20 years on the north side of my house which is about eight feet wide by maybe I don't know the width of my house and it had nothing but maybe some weeds and uh, sand and by the way those weeds are now excellent chicken food we call those weeds I used to think were pest weeds chicken weed and uh, now we've planted a whole bunch of things over there that do well in that dry sandy climate and it is producing we've got sugar cane there we've got a moringa there we've got a suriname cherry there and so you get the idea edible pad cactus we're utilizing that corner edge it's really edge space in that sense but we're utilizing that edge space to get in even more system capability you drill down deeper into it and get even more out of it so that we don't leave the corners where we could be I think of it like making a cake don't leave the edges without icing right <laughs> it's more delicious if the whole thing's covered with icing so let's get right down to it and just make it happen and you can see as you look at this picture most of my yard is fairly packed in with various types of trees and plants and vegetables but I do leave some open space to let in the sun. That's another important part of all of this. Uh, and as we fly over the northern end of my yard, you see where the animals are kept there. To the left, there is the bunny pen and run, and then to the right, the chicken coop. And both those systems are highly productive and then feed the rest of the yard. I had to move some systems around this year to make those systems possible. What you don't see is just under that sea grape to the right is a wonderful worm farm producing worm tea on the regular and currently eating some delicious rotten mangoes and rotten papayas. You start doing that and well it produces your, your nutrients for free. Okay, let's go to the front yard and take a look at this behemoth of an oak tree look at that thing blowing in the summer breeze and my friends we are now at the 12th and final principle of permaculture this is a doozy it's a good one creativity is involved and that is number 12 creatively use and respond to change things change we know they do <laughs> so you have to be ready to change with them uh, one example is one that I mentioned earlier in the video the price of lumber. So I decided to build a chicken coop myself as opposed to buy one for many reasons. I have a video on that you can check out on the channel coming out soon. But I really was limited because the price of lumber was so expensive. So you know the idea of do I want to spend two thousand dollars on a chicken coop? No. So you are creative and you find ways to implement reuse materials, get less expensive materials, etc. But you have to be smarter uh, to do that and spend a little bit more time really thinking through it. I took that time and it paid off. And that's the thing. Creativity really takes time. It's a process. And you need to think through all of the previous elements of permaculture to make sure that the outcome you come up with works and be flexible enough and open enough to adjust as the factors that were the basis for your decision change. So you yourself and your thought process should also have a feedback mechanism for continuous improvement as you trend towards greater and greater abundance not just in food but also in the kind of contentedness you feel when you know that you've created a system which serves you and the people you love 
Okay, well you've made it all the way to the end of this video. You know what? That means I really like you. <laughs> so thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, but more importantly, I hope it will motivate you to add these kinds of systems to your yard. Maybe you'll subscribe and we can learn about it as a team. All right, thanks for watching Eat Your Backyard. Have a great day.